All right, welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Barry from Moss Pawn and Gun. And today we have another gun gripe episode for you. Uh, again, we appreciate y'all's support of this video series. Everybody's been very happy. Uh, a couple of just basic announcements. We are upgrading our uh, camera equipment. I realize that the gun gripe episodes are a little bit lower quality than some of the other stuff we're doing production wise, but um, I just picked up some new SLRs. Uh, I actually bought uh, a D800 and a few other odds and ends so uh, I'm looking at the Nikon products pretty heavily so we will um, have an SLR to do the uh, uh, gun gripes on in the future so you can expect that uh, also we got some new Moss Pond t-shirts right. uh, a little Moss bit different Pond. design you'll see a close-up of that in a moment okay. anyway without further ado uh, today we're going to talk about the ammo shortage and uh, this is a really legitimate gripe because you know guns kind of trickle in right but, you know and we get a few guns but then all right, say I have an AR or a 22 or a Glock, but then there's no ammo to go with it. So let's right. talk about that, Barry. Well, bit. we're getting, uh, the guns are starting to free up. We're starting to get Glocks again. Uh, the little Glock uh, 26s and the uh, 19s have been almost impossible to find. They're, put, they're coming in now, but the problem is the ammunition. Now, we've got, uh, we were out of 9mm for over a week. And we had no hollow point, no ball ammunition. Now we've got ball but it's only one box per customer because we have to have it with a gun on sale. Right. So there you go. So uh, the ammunition is freeing up. We've got uh, 5.56 five, here. We've got 22 here. We're not showing you 5.7 because we have none to show you. There is no 5.7 ammo. Forget well, the, uh, the recent P90 video, I think, yeah, took care of well, a lot of the 5.7 ammo. The recent, so. the recent uh, video that Eric did took care of all the 5.7 we had. Sorry, but we <laughs> have no, we have none to sell you, so there you go. Right. But anyway. But the, uh, the ammo situation's been very, very, you know, touchy here lately. I mean, you know, in, in normal circumstances, you can just call up your distributor, order a couple of flats or whatever ammo you want, and move on with life. But we're just seeing that it's just not the case. I mean, ammo's not being allocated. And uh, one of my big gripes, and I guess the gripe of this particular video would be that, you know, we have a lot of people that are buying up ammo just to resell it. Right. And, and that's fine. I mean, it's a capitalist society, and if you want to spend your money to make more money, more power to you. But I think the problem is, I mean, people are getting on GunBroker, and they're paying 60 cents a shot for 9 millimeter when it should be, you know, 14 cents a shot. Right. And uh, it's just driving the price up. I mean, if you pay more for a product, it's going to be more expensive right. across the board. And Well, at you know, this time, they voted down the assault rifle ban. They voted down the high cap mag ban. Now they've got a vote on the uh, universal background check, but Obama was on TV this morning all over the news talking about gun control, this, that, and other. Now we did have a spike in sales today because of that. Now, we did. the assault rifle ban and the high cap mag ban is far from over, folks. Don't, don't be lulled into thinking that this is, a, uh, is going to be put on the back burner because it isn't. And I still believe and I still predict they will get the high cap mags before it's over with. Before right. it's over with, I believe they will get those. Now, the background check, I think they're not going to get. Well, Barry, you know, we're talking about ammo and everything, Barry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people talk about, okay, yeah, 9 mil is hard to get right now. 22 LR, I mean, out of all the different ammo that's out there, you would think that 22 LR would be all over the planet. It is. All over the place, but it is not. The only thing we can even get is this S&K uh, match ammo, which is great ammo, but, I mean, you're talking very expensive ammo. Ten dollars a box of fifty. Right. For Plinkin, that, that's a lot of money for ammo. Right. And now, let, let me add to that, this is standard velocity. This will not run a lot of semi-autos. Right. Okay. Um, part of the, the thing, too, is I have people come in and they say, well, what ammo is available? Well, you know, we got in a batch of those Makarovs that you saw on the last uh, gun tour. Okay. I got nine by eighteen ball out the wazoo. Twenty right. bucks a box. Plenty of that. It's cheaper than nine millimeter, and it's available. So, the one, the one, I guess, blessing in disguise to this whole ammo availability scare that's going on right now is that there are some types of ammunition that are quite common right now, just because they're not as popular. And right. it may not be a bad idea to check out some guns. Uh, like you notice, we did the recent video on uh, five guns, five forty-five caliber handguns that you need to have. Uh, forty-five is available. I mean, ball ammo is out there now. It's not like all over the place, but you can still get forty-five pretty readily compared to nine millimeters. So that's a video. If you're interested in getting into the forty-five market, you might want to check that video out. 
Um, in fact, I just bought a uh, CZ97BD, the actual uh, gun that was in that video, the 45 CZ. Uh, I picked that up, and we're going to be doing a review on that soon. We're going to be doing it. Uh, we're actually doing a CZ shootout soon. We're going to be talking about a ton of CZ guns, so be sure to uh, tune in for that because, I mean, I ended up buying about $5,000 worth of CZs just to show you guys a uh, good example of all the CZ guns that are out there. So be expecting that in the future. But there are types of ammo that are out there that are available. Uh, 762 by 54 rimmed is still out there if you're a Mosin shooter. Uh, you know, the Mosin rifles have been drying up. Mosin rifles are almost non-existent. We have one in stock right now. Uh, we used to buy them by the crate of 20 at a time, and we sold them pretty quick. But now if they just, they're just coming in one at a time, two at a time, they're drying up too. Now the CZ pistols, like Eric says, are wonderful guns. We're going to do a, re uh, a review of those. And uh, we've got, uh, but this ammunition situation what really boggles my mind is you can't get 22 LR. I mean, it just seems to me what? that in the world of ammo, you know, sure, I can understand not being able to found, find a few rounds of 5.56. Five, right. I can understand maybe not being able to find some 308. But it just seems like 22 is one of those things that should be all over the place. Now, one thing to consider, now, I, I know you're probably asking yourself the question, you're saying, well, why aren't these ammo companies busting their ass day and night to try to get this ammo out? Well, they are. They are. They're working 24-7, <laughs> running multiple shifts. I mean, they're at full capacity. They can't keep up. Right. Can't keep up. All right, well, we had to stop our conversation a little bit here to add something. We just got this news in, literally, like Ray just moments pulled it off ago. the printer moments ago. We got a email from Big Rock, okay, Big Rock Sports, they're one of our distributors, and they're basically uh, informing us of, you know, major changes in the way the ammo is being brought out, and essentially what's happening is that due to shortages, they are saying that some vendors have taken the position of raising their prices 10 to 15 percent, and those uh, prices are going to be in effect April 1, which of course is tomorrow, or uh, Monday. Monday. And basically, they're saying that if you pre ordered ammo at a given price, pre ordered it, pre ordered it, pre ordered it, and pre paid for it, that they are not going to honor that price and that that price is going to be raised 10 to 15 percent. Mm -hmm. Some of the vendors that have given the distributors the kick are Bushmaster, DPMS, ATK, Remington, and others to be announced. So, that right there, that should show you concrete that, okay, the ammo is going to be available, it's going to be there, but they're saying it's going to be 10 to 15 percent higher, and that's all the way down the line. That's the, what the distributors pay for it, what we pay for it, and ultimately what the consumer pays for it. Well, so unfortunately, that's just a quick bit of news. The BS part of it is you have already prepaid right. a price, and you, that's basically a contract. You've already yeah. prepaid, and they're going to jack the price 15 percent. That's right, that's right. That's Yep. Let's see. Yep, we will be forced to raise prices on open show orders as a direct result of the material price increases. Well, what it was, Big Rock probably didn't have the ammo when you know. prepaid for it. So now the distributors yeah. are charging them more. And so they have to pass it on to you. But you prepaid for the ammunition. That's right. Well, That's anyway, people, that was just a quick little addendum we wanted to add to the video. Now we're going to move on with our conversation. Right. That's just a little quick thing we wanted to add. There's rumors and conspiracy theories that uh, the government's buying up all the 9mm and the 40 caliber and things like that. Uh, you hear all these rumors about they bought uh, $20 million worth of 9mm. For what reason? Now, w there is a shortage of 9. There's a shortage of 380 hollow points. We have no hollow points. We have no 9mm hollow points. A lot of the defensive ammo is, right. is dried up. I right. mean, 40 cal, 45, any defensive ammo right now is tough to get. And Barry's right. I mean, I've read rumors myself. I don't know if they're true or not about the Department of Homeland Security uh, putting in an order for some billions of rounds of 5.56 right. five, or something stupid like that. Right. Uh, whether or not that's true, I don't know. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't buy into that kind of stuff. Um, there's people that say that that number was misrepresented, uh, that it was more like around 260,000 rounds, which is still a lot of ammo. I suppose for practice or whatever, I guess that would meet a department's needs. Uh, but whether or not that's true, I don't know. Well, now one source was saying that the, this massive amount of ammo they were buying was over a 10-year period. Mm. But 
Then other people's conspiracies say, well, no, they're buying it now. Right. But uh, some people are saying, well, it's no, it's a contract over the next 10 years, and that's not a lot of rounds if you look at the next 10 years. But what are they buying all this ammo for? They're buying hollow point ammunition, too. Now, they talk about this is for training purposes, so I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, hollow point ammunition, as you know, is against the Geneva Convention to use in combat. Uh, so it's not like it's going to be a, like, sustainable but, combat round, but I guess they could use it for practice. It's not against the Geneva Convention. Shoot me with it. No, it's not. But one can only uh, wonder, but of course we're not going to theorize on that. We'll let you draw your conclusions. Feel free to leave your comments on, as to uh, you know, what you think about that particular scenario and we'll respond in kind. Uh, the ammo shortage, I believe, is going to clear up. It's going to take some time. Uh, these ammo manufacturers are working their butts off trying to get this ammo out to us. In the meantime, though, in terms of you know, supply and demand and, and all of those things like we talked about in the other gun gripe about supply and demand. I believe strongly that what is going to end up happening is it's going to take people, you know, stopping gouging folks. And when I say gouging folks, it comes down to, yes, all right, if, if somebody at a gun store sells 22 at a standard markup, all right, if I buy it from my distributor for a certain price, sell it for a reasonable markup and sell it at, you know, pre-gun scare, you know, auction, or uh, pre-gun scare, you know, prices, average prices, and then someone comes in here and cleans the whole shelf off and puts it on gun broker for triple what they paid for it, and then the people on gun broker pay that money for that ammo, that's what's screwing everything up. And I'm telling you, you get on gun broker right now or any of the auction sites and you look at 9mm, 9mm is selling for 60 cents a shot on gun broker. That is insane. There is no reason why this box of ammo right here should not be twelve ninety nine, but or fifteen ninety nine at the most, right? Yeah. Or fifteen bucks, you right. know. But it's uh, it's a nightmare, and uh, hopefully this ammo situation will clear up and uh, just hang in there. Um, we are going to be doing more reloading videos over time. I know we've gotten a lot of re response and questions from people saying, "Hey, where are the hand loading videos?" Well, the truth of the matter is that the reason we haven't done as many hand loading videos is because. You guys don't watch them. If you don't watch them, I'm not posting it. And that's just the bottom line. I mean, if, I, if it takes me six hours to put together a video, film all the concepts, do the post-production, and then only 10,000 of you watch it, it's just not worth my time. Well, the hand-loading videos are valuable to people who handle them, but it's a narrow focus. It's a little narrow focus thing. Well, we try to do the videos to, to, to cover the whole experience. We do, and, right. and the reason I'm mentioning that, though, is that we realize that a lot of people are getting into hand loading because of this ammunition scare. Right. I mean, reloading components are at an all time low, so I know there's a, not a lot of new hand loaders out there. I do have a lot of older videos on hand loading that can teach you, you know, a lot of good things, and we will be kind of exploring a few of those other options with hand loading for some of you that are just now getting into it. So we will revisit that subject for those of you that are trying to respond in that way to this ammo scare. So. Well, another thing about getting into reloading, we get guys coming in every day, I'm starting to reload. Well, now it's a horrible time to start because we have no standard primers, right. rifle or pistol. All the popular pistol powders were sold out of. We don't have any 223 uh, brass. We have no 223 dies, no 308 brass. No, I, all the things you want, we don't have right now. Well, but it can be obtained. It's going to free up, hopefully, in the near future. Now, we've gone through this primer shortage and all this stuff before, but right now, there's no excuse for it. I mean, uh -huh. we can't get powders. Tony is on the phone all day long. He's on the phone. He's on the internet. He can't find he, what we have in this store. This wall that got rebuilt was because of Tony. Guys, hang in there. The ammo situation will improve. We see that guns are starting to trickle back in. Uh, we greatly appreciate you guys watching the videos. I mean, we get people from all over the world come and visit us. I mean, we had a visitor from Canada the other day that came down. Their Montreal, family, Canada. Uh, down in oh, Canada. Yeah. I got a phone call from a gentleman in the Netherlands the other day mm -hmm. that saw my video on the Dutch Beaumont and was just expressing his gratitude for me getting that old gun out and talking. So, um, you know, we got a call from the Netherlands the other day. We get calls from our buddy John down in uh, Australia. Um, I get calls from Germany. I got friends over in Germany that watch the videos. I actually had a, uh, a local uh, army commander um, stop by uh, on his way down to training, uh, came, was passing through and stopped by today to express his gratitude. So we appreciate that. We've had calls from Argentina. 
South right. America and all kind of places. We get calls from everywhere in the world. Japan. Of everywhere. course, except China because they're not allowed to. Right. They're not allowed to do what we do. Okay. But we realize there's a lot of you guys all over the world that watch us, and we really appreciate your support. And uh, more importantly, we appreciate your business. And uh, as long as you guys will keep watching these videos, we'll keep making them. Right. Hardest gun in the world to get, 1022. <laughs> oh, yeah. When you, when you can find one of these, you better grab it up. Oh, yeah, they're cool okay. guns. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is our favorite gun, uh, oh, yeah. 1022. Get you one if you can, boys, yeah. because you need one. If I can just shoot one right. I, I come to the conclusion, though, honestly, I'm not a real big fan of those uh, those sights on that gun, the factory sights. Man. Well, there's uh, all kind of ways you can change that. Yeah, we're going yeah. we, to look at that in a future video. I think we're going to look at upgrades for a 1022. Right. So we'll right. do a video on that, some of the common upgrades. Okay. Anyway, right. thanks for watching, people, and you guys have a nice night, and uh, stay tuned. Thank you now. Y'all come back now. All right.